Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and it's time for ClayShare Live. That is our weekly live public broadcast for everybody in the world. We are broadcasting on ClayShare.com, on the ClayShare apps, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Vimeo, and on ClayShare Prime as well. So you can watch us anywhere you want, on the go or at home. So we have a special double feature for you this week. We have Jeff from GR Pottery Forms joining us for the live broadcast right now. He is going to do a plate demo for you all. And then for my premium members, Jeff's going to be coming back and joining us for a super special lid demo. Everybody wanted more lids. You can't get enough lids, and I agree. So Jeff is gonna be doing that for you as well. Now we're also gonna have a giveaway today. So some lucky winner is gonna win a GR Pottery Forms gift certificate. And everybody can be a winner because for this entire month, Jeff is sponsoring ClayShare and is offering a 15% discount when you use the code ClayShare. All one word, easy peasy. All right, so I know Jeff is raring to go and waiting for us over there. Let's see how he's doing today. Hello, Jeff. Yeah, so glad to have you joining us from Michigan. Yeah. Oh, man, we came out to see you and uh, that Mother Nature, that she didn't cooperate. <laughs> I think she thought that we all just couldn't handle you and I together in the studio. Uh, I know, <laughs> right? I think that's it for sure. <laughs> we'll do it though. We'll... Unusual barometric pressure. Oh, I know. Well, we'll do it though. Well, it'll happen. Definitely. So, so yeah, I'm glad to be here and glad to be sponsoring this uh, month and giving you a little extra bonus on a discount. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know, there's a zillion of things we could talk about, but uh, one of my favorites is uh, dinnerware plates and specifically six and a half and nine and a half inch. So since you guys are so special, we even have, a, we, I marked the prices down on, if you buy the variety pack, four pack, I marked it down 30%. And then you're also gonna get your 50% if you put the place share discount in. So no double way. bonus. Woo. Double yeah. dipping. I love it. So save big. So it's, it's just on this one size, and I think it's just kind of promote. So if you're struggling making dinnerware, I think it's a good encouragement to uh, give it a go. And with this these sizes, um, six and a half and nine and a half, you really need to make a lip outside. So I'm going to kind of go through that tonight here in live. So first, you do not need a wheel. I just have a banding wheel here. And you don't even really need to use the banding wheel. Sometimes, you know, I have actually, to be honest, it's a little too much movement for me most of the time. So I, uh, I have a hard time clapping with two hands. So I got to hold one hand and clap, but I have that kind of coordination. <laughs> so uh, normally with the wheel, the wheel stays in one spot. I can deal with that. But uh, um, banding wheel, it's kind of going at a different pace. And uh, But anyway. We're going to talk about using the banding wheel. So if you're in my camp and don't like a banding wheel, that's good too. So, so actually, let's start without it. We use this one for sanding molds too, <laughs> sanding forms. So it's got this nice little uh, kitchen uh, drawer liner on top, give it a little more cushion, give it a little more uh, uh, catch. So all kinds of ways you can alter your tools, right? So. All right, so I rolled out some slabs. These are for the six, and so they're not going to quite cover my board here. But what I want to do is I still want to make sure I'm going to make this one by hand without a wheel. So it's still very important to compress the slab. And you know, some people think, and there's certain things you can, certain sizes you can get away with, but for making delicate dinnerware with kind of a kind of a lip. We want to make sure that that clay is all, the particles are all compact really well together. And so I want to do that by using a rib to do that. So um, one thing I constantly see too when I'm out and about doing workshops is that people like to use moisture to smooth this area. 
you really don't want to be doing that. You're really going to make it um, adding more moisture just kind of changes the variables. So try to avoid using moisture if you can. There's mice. You have a nice moisture, a slab that's got moisture in it already. And uh, the clay makers have done a great job of keeping that moist. And uh, so, yeah, we don't want to definitely, if we don't have to add any moisture, you know, because it changes the variable. So, um, and so, so maybe here I want to, um, so I can just use my form here by hand to do all the measuring. And I'm just going to take, take a little kind of my the little tool that I love to use to just make a kind of a mark of uh, the outside measurement. So this kind of measures for me. So now if I want to add a texture to the outside, maybe use this uh, kind of, this one happened to be MKM one, but there's zillions of them out there, right? And I know Ness and Kevin make some wonderful ones too that we're going to be using here in a minute. But just to kind of give you an idea of, you know, how you can kind of do things by hand without, um, you don't have to have a wheel. So options, lots of options. So see here, we now we've created this nice um, texture on there. And we can do is eliminate our kind of our measuring mark. Because if we don't quite get it uh, lined up super perfect, which, which usually happens, right? It's not going to show it as much. So it's kind of a way to kind of just uh, kind of forgive, give, forgive, give a little more forgiveness and a little more flexibility in our technique. So. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go around and this one's kind of my hand, so I think it's kind of nice. It feels more like a handmade plate, right? And I know when you first get started, I see this a lot. When you first get started with clay, you want all your friends to think you have these perfect edges and that you're perfect, right? Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not perfect. <laughs> so this showed those marks, those handmade marks. And uh, and the more confident you are in, in who you are, and confidence is key. I mean, we can uh, make beautiful things just by just being confident. So, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, See, I could process a lot of different ways, really, right? I could pre cut the slab around my edge. I think I might in this case. I really don't like to because I really don't like to commit to those things ahead of time. But since I have this nice kind of organic rim, I am going to cut along that edge here. And so now I can, I don't know if the camera you have on there, but uh, you can see how it's got that nice kind of cut around the edge there. If I want to make a little foot, it's a good time now where everything's still flat. I can take that foot cutter. Actually, I think I have another one in here. Oops, not that one. I have one that I bent so it's narrower. I think I'm going to use that one. It's kind of delicate little plate, so you don't need that wide base. I'm just pulling this corn skewer turn clay tool in into a cutter, and it's going to just cut my edge for me. And I want to remove all the unwanted clay first, so in case I have a nice little bevel on there. I don't really want to kind of stretch that out. So now I have a nice little foot. Be gentle and put it off the side here. And now keep everything registered. 
I can now kind of lift this off the bat a little bit here. I'm going to put my spacer key thing here, finger merger. And I can put everything on here upside down. So the reason I'm doing this is so it'll stay registered and stay and it'll now automatically center it for me. So if you're just kind of doing this by hand, what the system does is help to center everything for you. So it'll stay in place. Now, I really like to take my fingers and not stretch that clay and kind of push the clay toward the form. Just kind of real gently kind of push that clay in place so it doesn't stretch that clay out very much. And then second, I like to just kind of go around that edge and uh, again, push it to the form, form that clay. And then third, I like to take a rib. See my little guy, but that's here's the medium guy. Just scrape off the clay from the last time around. And now I can kind of add that third amount of pressure with a rib. And really the key with uh, Pro tip, get out your notebook. The um, key is that everything is even, right? Even pressure, even. And then that way it's going to dry evenly. And then when it's finished firing, everything's going to be even. Otherwise, there's, if you have variables, you're going to have variability in the finished piece, right? So make sure I eliminate all those canvas marks. If you've ever taken a class from me, you might hear me scold people for um, leaving their beautiful canvas marks. They want to leave those canvas marks on there. I'm like, no, not in my class. You get an F if you want those canvas marks on there. If you want to add them back, you can. I'm good with that. But they are a good indication of you know where we've kind of mess with that clay and where we haven't. So we need to make sure we give all the clay the same amount of attention. Otherwise, it's not even, right? There we go. Nope, not many canvas marks. <laughs> I always gotta fix them too. And then we can just drape this uh, uh, form on here. Let's, this because I'm hand building. I'm gonna add a little scoring there. And it's not the good thing with uh, using the forms here, making plates, I should say, or trays or platters, because we have this flat area that's helping us and not resisting us. So it's, uh, you know, it's going to, the gravity is going to help us. It's not going to be against it. So if you're making a mug handle, we may need to score it a little bit more than this. But because everything is kind of calm and easy going, like me, <laughs> we're gonna we'll just we'll just let it uh, score it just a little bit. Now we can uh, smooth that out. And again, I may have a temptation to uh, use a sponge. I guess, I guess I should kind of preface this too by, I like to use clay that has a lot of grog in it. Uh, just helps for so many ways in functional clay, durability, structurally when you're making, has less warping, it's more forgiving. So, but the one thing with groggy clay if you use a sponge, it washes away the 
soft material and leaves the coarse kind of gritty material. And so I guess I've learned to not uh, use a sponge and wait until the clay is set up a little bit to, uh, to uh, clean that up. Any questions about that so far? Anything out there? No, folks are just wanting to know where to get the form. So I'm just sharing that. It's grpotteryforms.com, everybody. And the discount code is ClayShare. You use that code, you'll get 15% off. And Jeff has a four pack that's already been marked down for 30%. So it's already marked down 30% off. And you can use that ClayShare code on it and get the additional 15. So if you don't have that set or need an extra set, now is your chance to get it. If you never tried GR Pottery Forms, get that. Well, you can, because that's a really great deal. Thank you, Jeff, for doing yeah, that, by a, the way. It's kind of an unusual uh, scenario here. Yeah, but, uh, thank you. Know, you. It's happy we summer. It. We're, you know, let's uh, make everybody happy. <laughs> so still what I'm hand building here. Actually, I forgot one thing. Now I see when I lift it up. What I want to do is take my little tool and go along that edge and clean up that edge. And this also helps to make sure that it's attached really well. So I love those things where two things happen at once. We're both cleaning aesthetically and two, functionally making sure that that uh, foot is uh, attached nicely. Here we go. And it may look a little rough yet, even around the edges, but I'm going to uh, clean that up when we uh, when we um, when it dries, stiffens up a little bit. So now, I can push it up through the middle. You can see this fun texture on the side on the edge there. And uh, so now, because I have this outside lip. I want to leave that center part, what I call a spacer, on there. And so now I can move that back on here. And what it does is lift up the form a little bit to help me kind of create an even, the word even edge, right? I can push down this outside edge. And even though there's a little bit of irregular area, it creates this nice kind of um, angle, even angle all the way around. There we go. So now I have a hand built plate. Uh, we can uh, set that on the side and make another one. It's like magic. Magic. Yes. All right. One of these. Roll out four slabs and see if I get all four done here. So I'll make a bigger one here. And this time, I'm still going to do it by hand, but I'm going to use um, a template, a rib template, to uh, to help me uh, kind of for kind of do that edge. So, so what am I doing first here? Making sure I'm compressing the clay, right? Making sure those particles are align properly. I got this little ridge in here, going right through here. But I kind of like that. I like those kind of magical moments of uh, the material kind of doing something on its own. So I just think it's going to leave it on there. So uh, um, this time, this time let's use uh, roller here. So again, I'm just going to set this on here. Somewhat center. Doesn't really matter. But now if I make a, a mark here, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, okay, so this, actually, let me grab a, for the bottom of this, it's nine and a half on the outside and eight in the middle. So let me um, grab an eight inch form and I can set that on here. And why I'm doing that, the reason I'm doing that is to give myself a measurement. So I want an eight inch measurement. 
instead of a nine and a half inch measurement. See that? So put that back so I don't get it mixed up. Now what I can do is, the reason I want to do that is I want to have a little, have most of my texture on the outside. You got to make the turn. <laughs> make the turn, yeah. And I like this little, uh, I know Jessica, we had those conversations about uh, the handle with or without the handle, right? Yeah, I take the handle off, but you like the handles? I do like the handle, yeah. I do. That's why they I come with the handle. Yeah. There we go. And now, what I can do is, I still have this mark on here. Sorry, I keep showing. You probably can see from above, I guess, right? What I can do is now take my rib and clean off that texture. So it's just going to be on the outside part of my plate. Does that make sense? And if you use the wheel, you can do the same thing to kind of clean away that texture. And that down. So by just having that measurement shows me now I have these nice, on this, on this particular roller, I really like how this outside part of it has the, this design on the top of those flowers. So that's where a lot of that, uh, that goodness is. So I'm trying to showcase that part. Fix it up a little bit. Just with my finger. I, um, but I really kind of try to, much I can do with my rib, the better, because it's much more of an even pressure. All right. And let's see how we add this poppy. Looks like it's going to cover that uh, and create a nice little, create that texture pretty nicely, right? Covered with that good coverage, not going to cut it off too much. So I'll wait. It's a little easier. Now line up my nine and a half inch form here. There we go. Looks good. It's fairly lined up. Again, I'm doing this all by hand, not using a wheel. So if you're tuning with me and buy a wheel, you don't need to. You need an excuse to get one. Get one. Hey, <laughs> okay. all right. So remember, I wanted to put my uh, rim template in there. So I'm going to put the rim template right in there. Oops. So even though these spacers have two two holes, we're just going to use the center one because we want to add the spacer and or we add the rim template and then put it into the middle there. So there we go. So now my rim template, the form and everything is all centered. Now put this on again here, upside down, hand over here, do a little flip. Maybe hold the clay or make sure the clay is kind of dropped down. And again, I'm going to now gently kind of push that clay towards the form. Second level so pressure. Before. Oh, you like to use groggy clay. And would you recommend for somebody who's just starting out that's a beginner or they're having problems with working um, that a groggy or sandy clay would be a good option for them because it helps Definitely. the, yeah, the clay doesn't work nearly as much with a groggy or sandy clay as it might with a porcelainous clay, like a B-mix 
or yeah. an actual porcelain. Yeah. So, right. um, yeah. A few, a, yeah, cause people, sometimes there's a lot of time, you know, timing's everything in pottery for success. And, uh, you know, yeah. when you're starting out, especially you want to be successful. So by using a groggy exactly. or sandy clay, you're setting yourself up to succeed right from the beginning and you're, you'll have less warping. And so you're using a groggy clay. What clay do you like? I like the Laguna 60 is the one that I always have had success with. Yeah, that's a good clay. I like that and as well. And it's funny because that was, I didn't select that personally. It was my... The, the person in charge, the instructor, teacher of the play center that I started at was using it. And it also creates speckles too. So it's a speckly yeah. play. And I, I really was probably more hooked on the speckliness in the beginning than, than uh, anything. So I would just, you know, go to the place where you're learning and try out what they have. You know, a lot of times, sometimes it's not always, um, it's just, you know, sometimes it takes a little more practice too. So, um, but yeah, definitely grog is the, is uh, real helpful for hand building. And this clay, I thought even worked really well. I used to make it to uh, make little kind of uh, um, prep holes. So those prep holes, uh, would be really you would match my platters so um so it's it's a great way to this kind of uh yeah accomplish a couple things at once one right like aesthetically and fun functionally so i also like um if i want more color this is a kind of a buff clay so it kind of it kind of mutes some of the colors so if you want a little more colorful piece um, than then I switched to using a uh, standard 182 G. And then uh, the G means grog. So it's got sand in it as the grog. And uh, so that's the other one I like to use. Have you ever use Laguna 90, which is a redder, deep grog? I do it's it's nice. It's very like the sixty, but just really a red brown. So it's darker. Oh, gives you more cool. depth. Okay. I also like that uh, the one eighty two G in particular can be used with, uh, and they don't always they don't necessarily recommend it, or you know they're not promoting it. But I've used it a lot, and it worked really well for raccoon firing, mm -hmm. and also wood firing too because it's, it's got that grog in there so it can handle some of that abuse of uh of wood or um raccoon so that's not i'm not gonna score it i think the clay is pretty wet so save some time but clay also is a thing where if you live in minnesota or if you live in england or Germany or Brazil, um, you want to. All all these clay companies make similar clays, so you just have to find one that um, will work for you. So, absolutely, I think shopping closest to you makes the most sense. Uh, you know, your local clay supplier. Get your clay from them. Don't don't pay shipping for somebody across the country or another country because it's just not worth it. Um, totally. So yeah, yeah. I always say, make sure to support your local clay clay supplier as much as you can first, because uh, they work really hard to um, slug around clay and uh, materials for everybody. And it's not the it's not like going to a car dealership <laughs> or a McDonald's franchise, or uh, it's uh, if they put a lot of Heart and passion into what they do. So they could sell insurance probably and do a little better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I um so they're there I've for you. started using the Tucker's clay out of Canada. So I don't okay. know if you've tried Tucker's, uh, but they've got their mid smooth stone speck, which is a nice speckled clay, but it it doesn't it doesn't have the warping issues that B Mix does. 
and they have a version without uh, spec too. Nice. It's a nice clay. Yeah. Yeah. Tucker's is great. They're, um, Frank Tucker is the, the owner and really good guy. And we were, I was just there actually. Yeah. Yeah. They make a lot of clay. <laughs> That's a goal. I want to get there. We just swung through there after uh, driving through Vermont. <laughs> yeah. You just got out in time, didn't you? We did. We yeah. Did. Yeah. <laughs> So how thick of a slab do you recommend for using your forms? I like a quarter inch. You know, a lot of it is the weighting of the finished piece. Um, so by, uh, you know, making sure that that weighting is nice and feels, feels um, structurally solid. But I think a lot of people get worried that they buy these nice pieces of pottery and that they're going to break. They're really the same as they bought it out of the store, maybe even better. So, um, uh, yeah, so thickness is kind of important. You don't, but you don't want this big heavy thing either. So which, that's, what's really nice about using slabs. You can control that thickness much easier than you can, um, by using the wheel to make plates. Um, and part of the reason I started making these uh, plate systems, plate making systems, is because I was making wheel thrown plates. And I was good enough to make the plate. But I had a, and, it, and it's fairly easy and pretty quick. But the problem was I would end up with all this trimming. I'd have to use like five pounds of clay to get a two pound plate. And uh, so I would go through extra clay. And then when I want to make a nice lip, um, I either have to add more base to the bottom to, make, to trim away. Uh, so if I, and then I would always trim through, I was probably a little impatient, um, through the bottom of one of the plates. Then I have to make them all over again. So the main kind of main purpose of using forms to make plates is that you have that structure underneath there that will support it in the drying process and help you to make the more decorative um, lips, um, lips that can kind of stick out a little ways. And then the second thing is it helps to add this foot on the bottom without having to trim a foot on the bottom. So those are those, the two advantages of using the system. So and now I can lift this up out of here. Up out of here, up in here. Uh, I love the kids, the kids' expressions. What do you have up in here? <laughs> but, so now I'm going to take my little wire cutter tool here. I have that rim template underneath, right? And I can trim away. That clay and then make this edge look like it's almost machine. So you want that kind of more perfect edge. You do that. And I think oh you're you're you have some room templates, right? They have a center hole in them as well. Do they have center hole? Yeah, they do. They don't have the opening like you do for your hands. Um, and, and the rim templates, because people download the file and then print it out themselves, mm -hmm. they can put the hole in or not put the hole in. It's up to them. So it's really great because you can print them out on paper. You can use your Cricut or Silhouette and make them in craft foam. If you have access to a laser or CNC machine, you can cut them out of wood. Um, and just a lot of you folks might not be aware. You don't need to buy your own laser machine. A lot of libraries now have them that you can use. Yeah for free you just bring your materials and the libraries will show you how to use it and they will let you cut your files on it so you can um, jeff has great room templates though and i do love the openings that you have in them because it makes it nice to slide everything off yeah so now we can yeah so it's we're just here to really give you hopefully narrow down some of the options right and also to kind of give you encouragement to Try what works for you. There's so many fun things out there and available to us. 
Yeah, so now I can push down on the below here. And uh, those, these are the openings that he was referring to to kind of push against the wood to take that uh, rim template out. So now I can take my, uh, ooh, yeah, I'm gonna show you that edge. You know if that uh, edge is, uh, you can see that pretty well. Maybe on the, oh. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Looks great. And what What I really love about texture is I just like the subtle kind of uh, pattern that just helps the clay kind of do a little bit of moving. So you can't always get the clay to uh, for the glaze to be uh, super precise. So you have a little bit of ways for it to move and. Kind of direct our eyes around for for what we want to see, but uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around. I'm going to first push down this outside edge, and really important just to push that push on this outside edge so we have this nice even angle here, right? So now what I want to do if I want to just kind of I want to create just a little bit of a ridge. I'm just take my finger. And just press in there to give a little more movement on the plate. Well, there's so many different ways that you can uh, turn this template into into your piece. What do you like? Do you like it to kind of have a you know more movement or less movement or or whatever? But there we go. Oh, folks are saying you need to make my room templates. I think Jeff's got a lot going on. Um. <laughs> you know, I don't even have, um, that's the kind of interesting thing is, to be honest, I don't have any machinery to cut forms. I um, I use an expert. <laughs> so, right. um, that, because it's a lot to, a uh, whole other thing to deal with, right? Oh, yes. So the wire tool that you use is from Dirty Girls Tools. And is that called their slingshot tool? Yes. Their... Yes. Yeah. It's really nice. It's, it's, um, uh, and I try to give you as many ways to use it as possible. I'm that way too. Like if I spend $25 for a tool, I want to be able to use it a lot. And it's super nice. It's really brass components. They they do a really good job of um, engineering, but it's um but it's hand built, it's premium. So you uh you need the right job for it to uh that's all that happens. So, so now I'm gonna make one here. Using the using the wheel here, and I've talked about this before, and, um, but I really like these uh, speedball wheels. They are a wonderful thing that you can just put up on the table here and uh, do your thing. It's great for anything under three pounds, five pounds. I think it can do more, but if you're going to get more than that. You really want a heavier duty wheel, but it works great for trimming and for for the wall system. So um, here's a whole other thing with templates. I mean, it's endless, right? Uh, this one, I found this one earlier and uh, I thought I'm going to use this one. But this one was just cut out on a, um, a die cutter. It's a little plastic. This one was cut out by um, Plum Island Transfer. But um, there's so many fun things you can do to uh, create your plates the way you want them to be created, right? So this one you could you could use in kind of prep the clay with. Uh, I'm way too impatient to. To do that, but I can now take some underglaze and put all this underglaze on here, and then I and then once it's finished, I can remove that and have different 
layers of the color, right? So So now what I can do is this uh, template is designed for this shape. So now I can make sure it's on there. Looks pretty good. Just about away. Um. What other fun things can we do here? Now nah, we'll just leave it as that for now. <laughs> but that's a nice thing with uh, slabs, right? Is you have so many options. So I hope you uh, like me. <laughs> well, it's it's good because uh, if you start selling your work, if you are selling your work. You want to create this nice body of work that all kind of lines up and matches with each other. So, so you'll you'll have to kind of eventually like kind of just mix the same stuff over and over. But what do you like? So maybe one year you make it one way, and next year you make it another. But these these uh, bat systems, I don't know if I talked about it, but they have this these locating grooves down here, so it makes it real easy to find those bat pins. And this one makes it stay in place. So, so it's a real nice kind of uh, way to. Uh, and uh, one of the plates here. Again, my second level of pressure, same thing happened on. Hand building, or if I'm using a wheel, same kind of three steps. First is to push it towards, second is to kind of mold it a little bit more, and then third is to use my rib to uh, just help compress those particles. The more packed they are together, the more likely they're going to make it through the firing. So if you're having problems with uh, your plates looking like potato chips, there's a lot of factors, but you know, one of them is that the main thing is the even compression. So make sure you're compressing that uh, that clay. Don't abuse the clay. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to have stress from abusing it. But uh, you personally and the clay will come out with a crack in it. So, Jeff, do you have any tips for when folks are setting everything up, how to make sure that everything is in the very center when they're laying everything down to begin with before the flip. I always use the, um, I always use the form itself to make a mark. And in this case, I use that template to make that mark. Um, and then once you put the form on there, the hole in the center of the form is in the center. So then the system will then automatically center things for you. So it may have been when you first made it like slightly off center, um, but then once you put the form on there, it's now going to have a new center, which is the center of that form. That makes sense. That makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a great tip. So that's kind of nice about the system. Again, is it kind of helps you to kind of not even think about those things. So. One thing I, I see lots and lots of people do is um, pre-cutting the slabs, which is totally good, but then you're going to have problems with the centering. I finally figured that out when people asked that question, is what they were, what, what really was their problem. Is if, so if you already pre-cut a slab, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to have it exactly in the center. Does that make sense? Where now, I'm going to cut the slab here and automatically the lip is going to be, the form is going to be in the center of the plate. So I think a lot of times at the beginning, I kind of missed that, the real question of that question <laughs> is the, you know, what, what, um, you know, so if you pre, so try, if you're having difficulty with centering, I almost guarantee it's that you pre-cut slab. So 
try to cut after after as your last step instead of your first step. So now I'm using this uh, compass turned uh, measuring device, and I'm going to measure so that way I know that I have the same lip dimension and. Uh, Soon, I'm thinking I'm going to have a little discussion. I might, I might sneak into that, uh, bust in on Monday to that premium group, sneak in and uh, yeah. do a talk, do a talk about these lips and talk about like, you know, where on the form, you know, depending on where you cut them, how you, what differences you have, and from kind of my perspective, what I've learned, and um, you know, Jessica has given a lot, a lot of information about that, but. Um, I know lots of uh, lots of angles is good, um, but then if you're not not, uh, I probably will later in the summer do one live on our site as well too. But uh, hopefully, if you're a premium member, you can find out on Monday. That's right, guys. Good morning, Clayshire. On Monday, Jeff will be special guest, not here in person, but virtually <laughs> coming to us. Yes. All right. Very excited. So you may have. Uh, as, as I as I was talking and talked about um, this uh, cutting this strip of play, and this I did with this extra play on the outside. I'm going to use this as the foot, so I didn't need to use my corn skewer turn foot maker. I'm just going to use this strip of play that already exists. And uh, I kind of have this rule. I, I think I heard Jess talking about. A rule because she has her own rule um, too as well, but it also a little bit depends on the clay you're using. But the, with the, these two clays that I like to use, my rule is if it's um, if the uh, this foot is over eight inches, then I need or eight inches or more, then I need to add a center foot in there. So um, this one is nine and a half on the top and eight on the bottom, so it's kind of right borderline, so I'm just gonna add a bottom foot on there. How much time do we have? Oh, you have got seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes, all right. Seven minutes. Um, yeah, and I think it, a lot depends on the clay you're using because for a groggy clay, it can hold up longer and won't slump as easily as say a porcelain clay. So if you're using porcelain, you might want to make the foot ring on like six and a half to seven inch or bigger exactly. pieces, exactly. right? But so just just depends. Uh, you can always test, right? Exactly. And the other thing is aesthetically too. If you just want them to match, like your your small plate match your big plate, it doesn't hurt to always have a second one. But it's sometimes a little more difficult to add that second one. But uh, yeah. All right, so quick tips on this um, uh, foot. What I want to do is take my inside finger and press, and I'm supporting that, covering it up so you can't see, but um, this to show you, I'm pushing with this inside finger to kind of with one point of pressure, push, push towards that outside. And now that it's centered, I can now push from the top with either my finger or the sponge or both, well, my other hand is pinching the lip to kind of ride along and give support. And then I can press down to make sure that it's uh, attached really nicely to the piece. And then once it's attached nicely, I can then use push on the outside part to kind of give it some shape. Now I can just kind of smooth it out, clean it out. I still love to use my little um, J20 Kemper tool here to uh, make sure that it's cleaned up and attached really well. Same on the outside. Now the inside one is way more difficult and it's the reason it's more difficult is because it's going around super fast. So we could slow it down a little bit. Could help.
And I like this tab with a little bit of a knob on there. I like to make rings or knobs. Chance this time I made a knob. But uh, yeah. And if you want to add some texture, the outside here. I'm going to add some texture here. We could have done this on the other side too, but uh, we didn't. <laughs> so all kinds of fun. Figure out what you like. And oh, I like it like that. Yeah, I like I like it doing it that way that you're doing now. Nice, nice uh, <laughs> yeah. I, and I love that you can kind of see the difference in the texture. And then if you want to make a band, then you can, as the wheel turns, you can just kind of hold your finger. <laughs> the wheel turns. Wheel that turn. was a We're that gonna... was a popular pottery soap back in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Y'all might have missed. You might have missed that. It, it was short. It was a short lived soap, mm -hmm. but you know. <laughs> Did that involve some sort of Swedish potter or? Uh, yes. Danish yes. Potter yes. Or yes. Like yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So all kinds of things you could add some more texture. Decorate how you uh, makes you feel alive. <laughs> Are you going to share the finished ones when you get them done? Will you post pictures somewhere, yeah. maybe in your Insta or? Um, I, I know some of you that have been share? here know that I got piles and piles of unfinished uh, demo pieces. <laughs> there are the years to get bisque. But not glazed, but I'll, I will, uh, since you asked, I'll, I'll uh, try to get this one done by next week. I have some things to glaze and fire, so we'll uh, add them in there. I usually just don't have anybody that, uh, I don't have a deadline. So then I get to play. <laughs> That's kind of fun, huh? Add a little texture on the yeah. side there. Now we press from the inside there, right? So, ooh, remember, I think Jess used this tip too. Someone, somebody out there. Oh yeah, Steven, I think you always this. use your glaze pints. Yeah, and it, I think it, one, that it takes away all the weight, but two, kind of helps it to be, uh, have, have a little more control, so it doesn't like, kind of flop. So then, yeah, we can lift it right uh -huh. out of there. Yeah. And if you wanted to alter the rim a little bit now, you know, you could add some little scalloped edges, ruffled edges, if you want to, while it's sitting on that. But yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. Options. Just options. Totally. All kinds of fun, right? Absolutely. You got a minute. I'm gonna, <laughs> no, right, no I'm rush. We can, we can uh, put the space around here. Yeah, look at that. Push it on there. Yeah, just like Jess said, we can... First, we can, uh, I like to go around that outside edge first. And then if we want to make kind of these, those kind of scalps every so often, we can do that too. It really helps to kind of functionally kind of keep that clay kind of controlling its, its movement. So there we go. Oh. <laughs> So I hope you have fun <laughs> making plates. Um, if you want to try, it's a great time for these nine and a half and six and a halfs to try to make a lip. Um, normally they're like 55 bucks for the for the two, four of them. Now uh, you can get them for like 30. So um, almost half off. So it's a yeah, it's great. good deal. That's just going to happen through this week. So that, that particular deal is only going to be through the through, through Sunday. So, which 15% off is for the month. So make sure you use your play share discount code. Awesome. All right. Any last questions for Jeff before we do the giveaway? If anybody else has got anything before we go. Uh, some folks said they would like a rim template from you that is just a circle. 
they would like that just for helping yeah. to get everything lined that. up. Yeah, the one thing that you really don't you really don't want that. Although I, you probably want that, I know, but that's the whole idea of cutting cutting it. <laughs> Because then you can right. you can get different measurements depending on what you like. I don't know what you like, so use the compass. All, tool. all kinds, all kinds of options, right? Yes. All right, all right. Well, Jeff, thank you for a great plate demo. Um, Jeff's going to be joining us for prime time next, and he's going to be with us on Monday and next Wednesday too. So Jeff's going to be with us a lot, aren't you, Jeff? Yes, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, I've me been too. Slacking off. It's been summer, so it's time to get to work here. <laughs> get back to work. Come back to work with us. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you You're in welcome. about 15 you, more minutes. All right. Thanks. All right. A great tutorial from the master, Jeff, from GR Pottery Farms. He's the plate master. He knows what he's doing. Any questions you have about plates, contact Jeff. And be sure to use the code ClayShare to save 15% off. Also, he has that really great deal that's 30% off for that set. And then you can put that 15% on top of that and save even more. All right, so we are giving away a prize. Uh, I forget, what is the prize tonight? Jeff, you're still in my ear, so you can tell me. 50, $50 gift card. So that's what we're doing right now. 50, and then what was the, what was the second half of that? <gasps> 70 if you're international. Okay, okay, I like that too. That's nice, that's sweet. So then you can buy anything you want on Jeff's site. So that's $50 for here in the US, international $70. You get to pick, that's nice. You're not, you're not just getting what Jeff says, you get to get what you want, although Jeff knows what he's talking about. He wouldn't steer you wrong. Okay, so the winner of tonight's prize is Patricia Boatwright. Patricia, congratulations. You, my dear, are gonna get yourself a gift certificate. I don't know where you are, so it's either $50 or 70, depending on where you live in the world. So that'll be exciting. Um, next in prime time, Jeff is coming back with us, and he's gonna be showing you how to make lids. There's been a lot of chatter about lids, so he's gonna do a lid tutorial for our premium members. And we have a little something extra special. Those premium members who were with us in our last prime time, know the special thing i'm not allowed to talk about it you have to just be there to see and find out what it is <laughs> all right everybody thank you so much for being here with us you can catch the replays of all of this on clayshare.com you can also download the clayshare app through your app store and watch our hundreds of full-length classes thousands of videos we have lots of tutorials we have glazing we have firing kilns we have setting up kilns we have making pots with hand building we have sculpting we have wheel throwing you want it we got it so be sure to check out clay share and check out jr pottery forms as well all right everyone be safe be well <laughs>